So here it is, ladies and gentlemen, the last one of the evening. Here are the nominees for the best Canadian feature. Sitting on the edge of a cliff, and I, I was in nature. It was a cold, miserable, rainy day. I would look out my kitchen table, and I could see the ocean. And it was just so beautiful. I was looking around, I seen the wallpapers falling off the wall. It spoke to me, that I, it's something I had to do. Damp. There's no electricity in the house. Birds, the wind, the rain. A lot of the windows are out. The cliffs falling down to the ocean. Two little kids, right? And like fall off a cliff or something. It was nature itself, the rolling hills. And uh, and we've got no money. <laughs> we had no money. You're not here all year round. Believe it or not, city boy, mm. we're not all Salt Spring Island hippies. I lived with my mom in Victoria during the year. Wait, so then it's two of us then. Mm. What? Mm. We're all prisoners here on this island. No. Mm. You're the only prisoner I want to be here. Most of the time. Come on. Yeah. Josie is the culmination of the first 50 years of my life, whether I want to admit it or not. See, I say that because I think she was always present with me. I think that although I never gave her the light of day or even mentioned her as a young man, somewhere in my psyche, somewhere deep inside me, she existed. And much of her existence was suppressed. And it's hard to know why. The Beatle, this isn't about you and your sex addiction. You're supposed to be wingmanning. Is he wingmanning? Uh, he is kind of, sort of, not really. I mean, Manny, are you, you wingmanning? Yes, I'm wingmanning, okay? Cozying up to the girlfriend is standard wingman protocol, moron. Sure, sure, just remember that he is Maverick and you are Goose. I can't do that. What are you talking about? Goose dies. We have to have defined roles here. Okay, if, if I'm Maverick and he's Goose, then who are you? I'm Stinger. Stinger? Who's, who's Stinger? The bald guy? Making oh, sure yeah, that yeah. you guys don't screw everything up? Can we just get this party started? We could do Crockett Tubbs. I could be Tubbs. What? Hey, ladies. You're not black. That's racist. How's that racist? You're not black. I would like to invite to the stage the Honorable Ralph Goodale and Miss Crescinda Catch, Miss Canada Globe 2016. Last of the evening. I am just so privileged to be <laughs> with my co-presenter here. For the best Canadian feature film, I heard the birch tree whisperer in the night. Receiving this award, director Kenneth J. Harvey. Thank you very much, yum yum. Mwah. Yum yum delicious. Uh, con uh, congratulations to all the other nominees. Um, fantastic films. And thank you to the jurors. And I have to say, my films have uh, screened in about uh, uh, 40 different film festivals around the world. And I have to say, this film festival is very impressive. Very, very impressive. You're doing a fantastic job. You really are. Um, very much so. And I know what, a th I, I run a, a, a book awards, uh, the Real Lit Awards, I've been doing it for 17 years. So I know what a thankless job all of this is. 
So I want all everybody involved, all the uh, John and all the board and everything to stand up and uh, give everybody a hand here for this. Stand up, everybody. I'm a director. Stand up. John, stand up. There you go. Everybody involved. Good stuff. <clears throat> it's a thankless job, and there's a lot of work involved in it. And, uh, and I want to thank uh, um, uh, Sabash and Eugene for driving me around all the time. Uh, they're great people. And um, I wanted to thank my producers and my executive producers, and particularly Dean McDonald, who uh, made it possible for me to come here. Um, and also my editor, Christopher Darlington. The film, um, I heard the Birch Tree Whisper about, uh, uh, Whisper in the Night, is about uh, Newfoundland artist Gerald Squires, who is a great, uh, a great artist and, and uh, didn't get the recognition that he deserved before he passed away. He was a friend of mine. And um, so hopefully this, this uh, award and uh, this attention will, will, will get that for him. The film started out, unfortunately, as a smaller film about him p painting a portrait of, um, of somebody, and, uh, and then he, he found out that he was dying. So the film turned into something uh, very different, as, as when you create something, we all know that's what, what happens, and um, what we plan to do initially is uh, it changes and come, turns into something else. And a lot of the times that's because of sickness, unfortunately. That's what we know as artists, you know, we all, we're all messed up in some way. But anyway, um, uh, so I wanted to, uh, making a film in Canada is very, very difficult, very difficult. And one of the reasons for that is because you can't get, it's very hard to get financing. And one of the, one of the main reasons for that is because 98% of the films shown on our screens in, can, in Canadian cinemas are American. And if you go into somebody and you say you want $5 million or $30 million to make a film, an investor, and they say, look at you and say, well, where's the money coming back from? How many screens do you have? And you say, none. Well, what happens then? Then you become a charity case and the government takes over. Um, so what we really need to look at is trying to get screen quotas in this country for Canadian films. The, uh, the French did it and the Australians did it um, because they were being inundated by, by uh, American culture, which we are. That's why we have, you know, gangster rappers walking down the hall corridors and schools here. You know, it's because of American movies, why we have cheerleader, you know, uh, teenage girls and whatevers. You know, it's all from American films. And um, we have to start looking at that and looking at the great impression that cinema and television makes on our children. Growing up in Canada, I mean, <clears throat> I knew what most major U.S. cities looked like. I knew what Chicago looked like. I knew what New York looked like. I knew what Washington looked like. I knew what Los Angeles looked like. I didn't know what Toronto looked like. I didn't know what Montreal looked like. I didn't know what Vancouver looked like. And um, that's sad. I mean, it's very, very sad. And uh, I know what they look like now because I've traveled around and seen them, but we are inundated by American culture and nobody's doing fuck all about it. And it's very, very, very disconcerting. So we have to, we have to really seriously look at that. Uh, Sheila Copps looked at it a long time ago but about putting 10% screen quotas on our screens. And Jack Valenti, who was then the, the president of the, of the Motion Picture Association of America, said, if you do that, we're pulling all of our um, films out of your country. And rather than saying, so long, great, you know, goodbye, we're going to have create all these jobs. I mean, the film industry, as everybody knows, is a microcosm for every single job in society. Every single job. There's truckers, there's caterers, there's hairdressers, there's uh, electricians, carpenters, tutors for kids, right, have to have them on set. Everybody. And we have to look at that. And, and look at it very seriously. I mean, we're, you know, I get 2% of our screens in our own country, right? I mean, that's, that's very sad. So I, I often get um, messages and, and talk to, to young filmmakers who, you know, who want to know how to get started in the industry. 
And I always say, you know, if you want to get, if you want to have a place in the industry, burn down every cinema in Canada. Burn them to the ground. And then when you build them again, if they build them back up, tell them we'll burn them down again. Unless you start showing Canadian films in our own country. Now, this is not America, right? And yeah, we are not Americans. Thank you, Jerry, for this, and thank you, everybody. It's a great festival.